Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Now sometimes the book just doesn't do justice to real knowledge in the field that can only be gained when you're out in the outdoors. One of those things that I've been learning about is hunting, but not just with a gun. How about hunting with ferrets? Now for those of you who don't live in the UK, this is a sort of traditional method used to be used years and years and years ago and it still goes on today. People enjoy hunting with ferrets. You basically have a ferret that you put down the rabbit hole. It chases around. If it can chase around in a rabbit hole, I don't know. Anyway, it will bolt the rabbit out of a hole and you have to pin all the holes down with a net. That's quite an unusual way of catching rabbits. You can go out, you can shoot them if you have a very good eye and you're very careful and you're stealthy. But this method is something that I've not read a lot about and I've certainly not really seen a lot of filming about. So here on the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show, we thought we'd go out with the cameras, a couple of cameras, and see what we could record in the North Hampshire countryside about catching rabbits, wild rabbits, with ferrets. Total wild scenario, beautiful countryside. is in the winter when you do do this sort of thing. Well, let's get out and see what we can do. Now generally the rabbits are going to be found obviously in rabbit holes like this and there in front of that you can see the little dots of black dots which are rabbit droppings and that tells us that the rabbits have been down there burrowing away they've been out during the night feeding and they're now back in those burrows down in well pretty well deep and safe and comfortable or so they think there's a lot of holes here as you can see this is a big rabbit warren and it tends to be in rough hawthorn covered spiky brambly areas where they feel safe from the predators they can come out onto the fields and feed but here's a predator that they haven't seen before this is a ferret beautiful looking creatures they have absolutely superb soft fur with them now these are kept in this box like this transported in the box like this and what we're going to hear about is exactly how these ferrets are used, how they're looked after, how they're used in the UK British hunting scene. So this is uh, what we use to stop the ferrets. Um, also we can locate the ferrets if they get laid up underground. Um, it's what's known as a, as a ferret finder or locator. Um, so that's the collar that goes around the, the ferret's neck and we'll show you be struggling to put that on a ferret in a minute. Uh, I'll just put the batteries in them. And that's the actual locator box itself. Uh, these are like little sort of watch type batteries, but they just sit in the cap like that and screw on. And as soon as that battery is in, that little unit's on and it's setting off a a ping every second or two and it's that ping that is then picked up by the locator. I'll sort of turn the box on and you can hear those pinging and there's a there's a dial on the back and you can actually locate how far underground the uh, ferrets are using that dial so when you get the ping you can read off the depth that dial and it gives you an indication of approximately how far down they are. This is the tricky part, getting the uh, collar on the ferret. So these are the ferrets, Polian and Winston. Uh, Winston's the bit more experienced one, so we know he's a good, good worker. Um, this, this is Winston. Now they are actually brothers, but there's a bit of distance in time between them. We'll collar up Winston first because he's got a really huge thick neck so I have to make sure I get the longer collar on him. And is there colouration differences with ferrets? I don't know. There are, yeah. yeah. So these, these are what we call polecats so they're sort of close to the original sort of polecat colours but you can get all sorts of different colours. A lot of people like using the albinos or whites because they're quite visible 
so when they pop up at the bur burrow it's easy to spot them um, Problem was you've got to make sure that the collars are on tight because if it um if it comes off it digging comes off, that's empty it. collar that's exactly. the sound is not fun is it? <laughs> Could have caught on a branch or something. He's ready to go. As you can see here, a lot of the holes have been covered by high visibility nets. Now the reason they use this is because obviously if you use camouflage netting, if you're putting 30 or 40 nets out in the undergrowth, you're never going to find them. So high vis netting is the way to go. With all the nets in place, you can see up pops Mr. Ferret. He's been down, he's been around the burrow. Now he might turn around like this one has and go back down of his own accord, or you might indeed have to lift him out and put him down another hole. He's gonna search away, tracking through those burrows, trying to find out where the rabbits are hiding. He'll go down, he'll actually come up to the net, look around, and then he'll go back down on his own. And here we have our first rabbit. He's bolted out into the net. He's tangled up in the net. On the right, you can see the ferret who's come out of that burrow. He's chased the rabbit into the other entrance and the rabbit's caught in the net there. It's tangled up in the net. It's got to be sorted out. Then it's got to be dispatched. And meanwhile, Mr. Ferret's back off to look for another rabbit. He loves them. When you lose track of that ferret you're going to search for it using the signal that comes through on the ferret finder as explained earlier it can tell you what depth they're at it gives you a good idea and the worst case scenario is you get stuck and you have to get the spade and dig it out yeah so we've um, managed to bolt one out of this set which is which is positive so we've got one rabbit for dinner but what we do do um, on site we just strip the bladder just check that there's nothing in there. Might be that this one's empty because that's not that's not coming. So I think that one's empty. Thankfully, sometimes they'll have a full bladder, and you just need to get that get that out of them and take the meat. It's best to gut them sort of as, as quick as possible, depending on what you do. Some people gut them in the field, so you dig a hole, um, gut them, bury bury the entrails. I, I generally I'll take them home and gut them because I like to give the the offal to the to the ferret so I like to use as much, much of the rabbit as well um, you know just be as sustainable as possible really so but that's what it's about free range organic sustainable meat so if you've got time we'll might have a look at another set Jules. Yeah, let's do it, yeah. now here's some tracking methods to give you some tips look at this fence it's been pushed through by other rabbits and or predators going there you can see these little game trails which are wear marks they leave a muddy track and go underneath fence lines through hedges. You can see that there is actually a wear line regularly used by creatures going underneath the fencing. And there, it looks to me like a fox print. I may be wrong. Some expert out there might be able to tell me. But it's got four toes. Unless it's a four-toed rabbit. I don't know. But there again, you can see the little game trail. And that comes out from hedgerows onto the actual pasture they feed on. Here also are some deer tracks. If you just look, you can see there's two finger marks there, double finger marks there of the deer. Now they could be something small, like here in the UK we have muntjac deer, which is a very small deer, it's quite prolific. And they do travel on the edges of woodland as well. Now here's some fresh rabbit droppings there. That shows you they'd literally been out feeding that morning. It's a good idea if you can search for 
rabbit droppings like this, it gives you an idea of where there should be rabbits. And look, you're never gonna know because there are so many holes. And some of the holes are dead ends. Some have side tracks. Now that looks like a dead end hole there, as you can see. There's obviously you put the ferret down, he's gonna turn around and come back out again. There's another hole there. But I can't, well, I just can't get the camera all the way down it. But as you can see, yeah, this one looks good. It's a proper sort of cavern that goes twisting down and that's what that ferret goes down. These are the holes that you've got to cover up because the rabbit is going to bolt out. But sometimes they tell me if that ferret is chasing the rabbits up the hole, you can actually hear the ground drumming or vibrating as the rabbit's bolting out. Now you can see we're getting right in amongst the gorse bushes and putting the ferrets down holes. Well, you wouldn't think they'd be worth putting any ferret down these holes, but trust me, you have no idea how deep those holes are, how many burrows, how many channels, how many avenues. You don't know what the rabbits have been doing underneath there. So always pop them in and provide you've got the ferret finder, you should get your ferret back. Hopefully the first thing that comes out is gonna be a rabbit closely follow, followed by Mr. Ferret. Now just check out this ferret. He goes down this hole. For some reason he doesn't like that hole down there. He's now gonna go and try and work his way down. But look how he's sniffing around. He's actually looking for seeing which is the freshest smelling rabbit scent in there. Does he like that one? Uh oh, he reverses. He likes the one on the left better. No, he's gonna come out, have a poke around, but look at him scenting, getting the scent, getting the smell. He's, he's looking, he's getting ready to hunt and he decides to go down that one. So there was about four holes he didn't go down and then he came back out of, but once he got that scent, he was well on the way. And here we go, that paid off with another rabbit in the net, bolted in the net. Mmm, I feel dinner coming already. And again, they squeeze the stomach to try and empty the bladder of the rabbit so that it doesn't taint the meat. Here's a couple of false digs here. You can just see where the rabbits have started digging in there and not actually made a full burrow of it. It's where they've been just digging away. There could be other creatures doing this, of course. But most likely with all these holes here, if you find something like an embankment, then you've got a really good chance of finding where the rabbits are. another rabbit bolted into the net. Here's the ideal way to dispatch them. One blow to the back of the neck. Bam, that's the neck broken. That is one dead rabbit, ready to be skinned, ready to be eaten. You couldn't ask for any fresher. The day was done. Many, many nets were coiled up, packed up and put away into the krill basket. If they're put away tidily, they'll come out tidy, won't they? The ferrets are uncollared. They're put back in their toasty little box having done all their work. A great session. They've got some rabbits there. But do they want to go back? Will you tell me? I think they still want to go rabbiting. After a really enjoyable day in the Hampshire countryside in the winter, some nice big rabbits there, not shot, clean kills, chased out by the ferrets. It's a traditional British way of getting rabbits for dinner.
So obviously a really important thing if you're going hunting or shooting is to get the landowner's permission. Um, just want to share this as some really best practice stuff that, that Rob, when he came down and asked me to shoot on the farm, was he, he came down with a printed out version of the hunting act. Um, so he's effectively got written permission from the landowner to hunt on the land. So it's just some really, really good practice stuff that um, if you want to get out there, do some hunting, do some shooting, you should, you should really do. So as a responsible ferreter, you know, as well as looking after your ferrets and making sure you're dispatching your prey uh, humanely, this is the other critical thing because if anyone questions you or, or challenges you when you're on the property, I've got the letter from George stating that I've got permission to be here and what exactly I'm doing. Well, we've had a good day's ferreting out on George's farm. We've bagged three rabbits. We did let a couple get away that slipped the nets, but uh, we'll have some more for next time, won't we? So the ferrets will go home now, have a good, good snooze, and we'll take the we'll take the rabbits back, and we'll skin them, gut them, and we'll cook them. Um, my favourite way of cooking the rabbits is slow cooked. You need uh, it's quite a lean, it's very lean, protein rich meat, um, and ideally you want to cook it with something that's a little bit fatty. My favourite thing is using chor chorizo, a bit of diced chorizo in the pan. Let the oils come out, section the rabbits, and and put them into brown in the chorizo oil and then into the slow cooker and add the, the veggies that you want and then a nice slow cook and a uh, lovely, lovely rabbit stew. So that's what we'll be doing with them. Sustainable, free range, you know where they've come from, that they've been killed humanely, dispatched humanely um, and uh, yeah, better than what you can walk in and pick up on the supermarket shelf in my opinion. That's what it's about.